I'm in the most northerly point of the UK, in the remote Scottish Highlands. The low clouds are forcing us to fly only two and a half thousand feet above the mountains. Much lower, and the jump could be fatal. Ah, Yogi Sokun. That was a low and a fast parachute jump, and I've landed in pretty horrendous conditions. But I'm down at least. The snow is now blasting in all directions. It's hard to feel where the wind is coming from, but the ice on the rocks shows me the wind direction. See down here these ice particles. These are really helping me maintain my direction. And this wind now on these high plateaus has really picked up. It'd be so easy to lose my bearings. Uh, but what these little things are, they're called rime eyes. And what happens is this moisture hits the rocks and then freezes. It starts to grow these particles out towards the wind. So as long as I keep these pointing that way, that's west. I'm heading that way still, north. Hey, I've just seen this. It's a bit coming down the ridge, came around here, and just see those markings in the snow. And that is leading to that deer down the bottom. It's a red deer that's fallen and died. There are more than 25,000 deer roaming wild in this part of the Scottish Highlands. Really? really stinks as well. It's obviously been here a few days. Action. This meat's going to be oh. no good to eat. It's going to be past that. What I might be able to do is, is just use, use, oh God, it really stinks. Just use the fur off him and to give me some warmth and give me some protection. So I'm going to drag him out of here. Actually. The fur on this deer is really thick and it's coated in oils, making it waterproof. The meat really stinks. If it was fresh, it'd be perfect to eat. Okay, that is the fur off. And look at that. Indigenous people all around the world have used furs like this, you know, for centuries, for both protection from the weather and also for warmth. I've got my fur, but I've used up the last hour of sunlight. I don't know if you can see the, the little gap between there where the snow's melted against the rock and it's made like a little hollow. And that's going to be great. It's going to get me out of the wind. And literally all I can do here is lie in this and the snow's going to insulate me on one side and the rock is going to protect me from wind and the rain on the other side. The temperature's minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit and I've got very little shelter against the continuous blizzards of the Scottish Highlands. Uh, this carcass really stinks. It's also started raining and I'm beginning to get quite cold now. And I also need a pee, which is just boring. Uh, but I don't want to just waste a pee by just doing it into the snow. That's what I'm going to do. And pee into my water bottle here. At least it's going to keep me warm for some of the night. This gives me an instant hot water bottle. And right now, it's my only source of heat. Put that on my jacket. It's morning in the Scottish Highlands. And I've got to find a way down. This mist is just really clagged in now. And it makes it really disorientating. And you see how easy it's just to get lost and lose your bearings. Uh, but often though, when it still winds like this, it means the mist hangs around on the mountain tops. And what I'm hoping is if I follow this stream down, just maybe a few hundred feet, I might drop out of it. There have been people living here since 4000 BC. And the early Highlanders had a reputation for being incredibly tough. And to survive in these freezing conditions, they needed to be. As I head through this open landscape, I need to check I'm still heading north, and even in this bleakness, nature provides clues. What I'm seeing as I move through this valley is there's quite distinctly more moss growing on a lot of these rocks on one side uh, than the other. Look, this is much barer. And what this tells me is where all this moss is, is actually north facing. Uh, this will get less sunlight, there'll be more moisture, and all of this 
will grow and it's a good reliable indicator of north and south. Even in the cold, it's easy to get dehydrated. But there is a way of finding water out here that's safe to drink. Ah, that's what I was looking for. It's called sphagnum moss. If I pull a bit of this out, uh, you can see it. Uh, but you can actually use this as like a, like a minor antiseptic. What it contains is iodine. You can actually drink from it, and then the iodine inside uh, will kill a lot of the bacteria. And all you need to do is squeeze it and drink. Sphagnum moss is used in organic water filters as the fibres in the moss strain out dirt and heavy metals. This is fox poo here, and I can tell that because it's black and it's also got like tapered ends. But what's important here, if you look closely at this, you can see some rabbit fur uh, just on the outside of it. And if there's a fox out here catching rabbits, there's every chance I can. Rabbits don't hibernate through winter. They are my best chance of decent food, but they're almost impossible to catch by hand. All of this here is just perfect uh, territory for rabbits. You see open grassland, long grass, heather, lots of little runs that are going to lead between uh, the burrows and where they're feeding and where they're drinking. And this is going to be a good place for me to set some snares. The paracord, tying my bottle together. And yeah, you can use any sort of string really. If you haven't got this, you use your shoelaces or your bootlaces. I'll take this and then just put a little knot in the end of it, thread that through there. And I've got then a simple noose. And what I'm really looking for here are just these runs. Look, I don't know if you can see this really clearly. It's like really like a rabbit's motorway. You know, and they'll use these. So if I lay it here, I want to make sure the stake is really well in the ground. So if I do catch something, it's not going to be able to pull it out. And I want the noose ideally to be like about five finger height off the ground. So it catches the head and its ears and big enough for it to be able to get its ears through. And just a bit bigger than fist size is good. Something on your mind. I'm going to set about four or five of these and I hope that I get something. That's movement. If you're in any doubt after that, just give him a really good hit on the back of the head. Okay, this is gutted and ready to cook. And what I'm going to do is make like a really simple uh, prong to spit roast it. This prong needs to be two foot longer than the rabbit so that the carcass fits in the middle and there's a foot length at each end to balance it over the fire. The best meat is on the back legs and I want to pin them flat to cook them fast and even. Over a hot fire, an adult rabbit will take about 30 minutes to cook. Let's give this a try. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Tastes like rabbit. <laughs> right, tastes amazing. Really good. And it's quite, you know, game taste is always strong, strong meat. But I like that and it's delicious. It's a great breakfast. I now need water and to start following the river down. It's flowing north and the closest towns to the mountains are in that direction. Walking through this heather is tiring and it's hard to see what you're stepping on. It's the third time I've done that in an hour. It's getting boring. But survival is about trying just to keep positive. Even when you're cold and tired, think about what matters most, your family, your friends, whatever it takes to keep yourself moving. <laughs> 